Hey guys, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about igneous rocks. So let's get started. One of the things we need to understand first is the structure of the earth. We need to know that the outside part of the earth is called the crust and that crust includes what's under the ocean as well as our what land is on our continents. And I want to make sure that we understand that it can be very thin at different places and very thick at others. So the Earth's crust is not always consistent. It's not always the same throughout the, um, the entire Earth. But that we do have an entire layer of rock um, that surrounds the outside of the Earth. So underneath our oceans, I want to make sure we understand the crust is underneath the ocean. But the question is, what's underneath the crust? We haven't been able to go dig down into the actual underneath the Earth's crust because of the extreme amounts of heat. And we know there's an extreme amount of heat based on what evidence we see coming out of volcanoes and in certain places like Yellowstone National Park where we see the extreme these steam vents. And so it's really important for us to understand that we haven't actually been able to see with our own eyes exactly what the under, underneath the Earth's crust looks like but we've been able to go ahead and use um, a lot of data based on what we're starting to see coming out of the crust from the inside of the Earth, as well as by taking a look at data from earthquakes. We can actually kind of start to understand a little bit about um, the structure of the Earth on the inside. And when we look at the speed of the rate of which earthquake waves travel through our Earth and how fast it takes them to go ahead and move from one location to another. So we can learn a lot about earthquake data and earthquake wave movement to help us start to understand the structure of the Earth. So here we go. We're going to get started with the structure. We know that the outside part is called the crust, which is a solid rock. But right underneath the solid rock, we have what's called the mantle. And the mantle is made up of magma, liquid molten rock liquid rock. And in order for rock to be liquid, it has to be at extreme amount of uh, heat. So we have to have extreme temperatures underneath the Earth's crust. And then just below the mantle, we have what's called the core. Now the core is divided into two sections. There's the outer core, which is liquid metal. And then we have the inner core, which is solid. And the reason why the inside of the core is solid is because there's so much pressure and so much gravity pushing, pulling to the center of the Earth that it goes ahead and causes those particles um, to be really extremely close together. So that's why it's considered a solid. The part we're really going to focus about is the mantle, which is our magma or molten rock. One of the things that oftentimes happens is we talk about lava because that's what we see when it comes out of a volcano. What it's called inside when it's in the earth is called magma though. So making sure we understand the difference, magma is when the, the molten rock is inside, or earth, inside the earth, so inside the crust or below the crust. But once it comes out of the crust, we call it lava. And when that lava cools and solidifies, that's our igneous rock. Now, one of the things we'll soon start to realize is that whatever whatever materials or minerals um, make up that lava or that magma. Now, one of the things we want to make sure we understand cool, is that rock. And that igneous kind of rock helps us identify is what types rocks. So of really igneous hot rocks we have. rock that cools. And when it cools really quick and really fast, that's called extrusive igneous rocks. So when rock or lava comes, or when magma comes up through the crust and then it out exits out the volcano, that lava starts to cool and it cools rather quickly. It'd be like going ahead and taking cookies out of the oven. Those cookies cool a lot faster when they're outside of the oven than when they're inside. Intrusive igneous rocks are like when the magma is in the Earth's crust and it gets further and further away from its heat source, but yet it's not quite outside the Earth and it slowly cools. You have made cookies, you have them in the oven. If you turn the oven off, but you, you leave the cookies in there, it's going to take a lot longer for those cookies to cool. That would be like an intrus intrusive igneous rock. They slowly cool because they're still in the Earth's surface. So I want to make sure we have that connection of extrusive is when it exits the Earth's crust and it's on the surface. And intrusive was when it's still inside the Earth's crust. Now, like I said, intrusive and extrusive, they actually look different. And we can start to pay attention to specific details. When rocks are um, igneous, 
and they're extrusive igneous rocks, that means that they cool really quickly. And so one of the things I want to make sure we start to understand is that we can take a look at the rock and we'll start to pay attention to the crystals. If it has very little crystals or no crystals at all, we can't see the crystals at all, we know it's extrusive, meaning it cooled really quickly. Intrusive rocks are rocks that slowly cool. And so what ends up happening is we start to see these really big crystals inside the rock. And so oftentimes when we see intrusive rocks, we'll see lots of crystals inside those rocks. So you'll see lots of different, and oftentimes it's lots of different colors as well because it's had, it has time to go ahead and cool. And so certain minerals cool quicker than others. And so you'll start to see different colors start to appear. You'll start to see different crystals start to appear. One of the things I want to make sure we start to understand then, we need to make sure we understand the layers of the earth. The outside of the earth is the crust. The inside right underneath the earth's crust is called the mantle. That's the liquid molten rock. Then we have the inner, the outer core, which is liquid metal, and then the inner core, which is solid metal. When that molten rock from the mantle exits the earth or cools down in the crust, we form igneous rocks. Now, igneous rocks can be intrusive and they can be extrusive. So remember, intrusive means it's inside the crust. Magma moves up from the mantle through a crack in the crust and it moves up and it moves up, but it can't quite get out of the earth's crust onto the surface. That's called intrusive igneous rock. So it's going to cool down very slowly. Extrusive, so think about it. Extrusive, it exits. And so it, that lava or magma molten rock exits out of the Earth's surface. It cools really quickly, and so we don't see any crystals. Make sure that you have the, all the notes ready for class on Monday because we're going to start applying this to the rocks we start to observe in class. So we can see if we can, are looking at an intrusive igneous rock or an extrusive igneous rock. Make sure you let me know if you happen to have any questions, and I'll see you in class. Have a good day. Bye.